Hey guys, Mickey from Tom's Outdoors. Now, so far this season, our lakes have been absolutely firing and they're just gonna get better and better. We thought we'd take some time to go through and show you guys all the different lines we use on a lake, either fishing from the bank or from the boat. We're gonna start off with floating, go through to intermediate, and we're even gonna finish up with some nice, big, heavy sinking lines. And we're gonna show you where you might fish them, how to fish them, and which lines will be right for you. Let's get to it, eh? Now to start off with, we're just gonna look at a standard five weight floating line. This one's on a pretty standard nine foot trout rod. We've actually been using this rod for a lot of different intro to fly fishing series, which you can check out on our YouTube page as well. Now, lots of people will have this set up and this is the perfect way to start your lake fishing. You don't need to be on the boat either. You can be on the bank too, covering water. And we go through that in our intro series as well. But what we wanna look at today is just how to turn this standard leader into a really effective lake fishing machine. Now, if I look at this, this is the same tapered leader that came with the rod. It was a nine foot 3X tapered leader, so that finished in about eight pound. And over the course of filming, <laughs> we've ended up chopping it down a fair bit. So now it's only about six foot long, but it still has that really nice taper, which allows for the fly to turn over well. And when I catch it, I can show you, we've still got that really nice fat back end, you know, that's at least 25 pound. And now we've tapered down, I'd say this is probably about 12 pound now. Over time, you'll lose those leaders and then you can rebuild them. And in fact, you want to rebuild them for each different situation that you're gonna fish. Now to start off with today, we're gonna to be on a floating line. We're gonna be fishing into some pretty shallow water along with a little drop off. So what I want is a nice long leader and then retrieve back and let a fly hang on that drop off. Now to build this leader, I'm gonna start off with some 10 pound fluorocarbon. Now fluorocarbon is really handy for lake fishing because it doesn't have as much stretch as mono. It's also a little bit stronger for the diameter. Now what that means is this says 10 pound, okay? Now if I had 10 pound monofilament, it would actually be thicker. So fluorocarbon is skinnier, but stronger despite it, which means it sinks nicely in the water column and it's perfect for this style of fishing. Now, to our existing about 12 pound butt leader section, I've added about four foot of 10 pound fluorocarbon. Now that brings my total leader length at the moment up to, there's six, seven, eight, nine and a bit. And I wanna go for an about an 11 foot leader. And I'm gonna finish off with eight pound for the tippet. And now we're looking at a really effective lake leader, which will then allow us to fish a few different depths with the next part of our system connected to our floating line. And that's our fly. I always organize my flies from lightest to medium to heaviest because I will be fishing all different depths with this floating line with different weighted flies. And I'm gonna start off with my absolute lightest flies that I have for this style of fishing, which have a little bead chain instead of a tungsten bead. So all over I've got six, 12. Turning over a 12 foot leader on a floating line isn't too hard on a lake. And you do wanna create a bit more space between that thick fly line and your fly. Plus with different weighted flies, a 12 foot leader will allow me to fish all the way through the water column down to about six or eight foot, depending on the weight of my flies and the speed I retrieve them. And that's what we're gonna look at now. So I've got my floating line and my lightly weighted, or you could even use an unweighted fly to start off with. And then, like I said before, there's a little drop off on this edge that I'm thinking the trout will be cruising along. And the longer I leave that fly hanging over the drop off, the more likely a fish is gonna see it and come and eat it. So what I'm going to do is cast right into the bank. And if you're fishing from the bank, you'd be casting out oh, about 45 degrees from the bank. And then very slowly, I'm just gonna give it little twitches just to wake it up. Now with this lightly weighted fly, it's not getting more than a foot or two deep, which is fine. Trout love to predate up. Now it just depends, there he is, oh, I missed him. <laughs> just depends on what type of day it is as to how far they will come, how aggressive they'll be. If you want to cover water and find fish, starting off with a floating line and a lightly weighted bugger, and a few casts in likely spots then moving on. If you're fishing the bank, just walk in the bank. Or what you can always do is instead of staying in one spot in your boat, is use the wind, which we've got a fair whack of today, to your advantage and start drifting along the bank. 
Now I've just reached the end of my retrieve here. And no matter if you're fishing from the bank or from a boat, whenever you reach the end of your retrieve on a lake, you wanna come up slowly, wait till you can see your fly, pause, make sure there's nothing behind it, and then recast. That's the hang. Now, doesn't matter, like I said, if you're on a boat or on the bank, the hang is so important when you're lake fishing. The amount of fish you catch on the hang is insane. Just remember, always do an insane hang. Now, with our floating line, there's a couple different ways we can fish to different depths. The main one is slowing down a retrieve. The longer we give this to sink, the further it will get. Now, what I'm going to do is go from a lightly weighted, just bead chain, or you could even just a lightly weighted brass fly. I'm gonna change over to one of my medium weighted tungsten flies because we're coming into some slightly deeper water. I want my fly to sink a little bit faster and just get down a little bit quicker. So now I'm coming into slightly deeper water. I've got my slightly heavier fly on and I can actually work it a little bit faster because it is weighted heavier, it's going to get down a little bit deeper than the last fly. The hits I was getting before on a very slow retrieve were quite hesitant. They were tapping at it, they were swirling around it, but they weren't destroying it. And I tend to find if fish are slightly hesitant on a slow retrieve, then increasing the speed of my retrieve can bring them on. Now that does mean I need to go to a heavier fly to keep it down in their strike zone, which is what we're really focusing on today. Now. I've had another little tap, but I still don't think I'm getting deep enough or fishing aggressively enough. I'm gonna stick with my floating line, but I'm gonna do my final trick. Now I could go up to a, an even heavier fly again, but that's only gonna get so far. What I'm gonna do is switch over to a sinking tip, okay? Now we've got a variety of these tips. This one happens to be a sink three in a 10 foot, which is a great all rounder to attach to a floating line. And it's gonna turn my floating line into a bit of a hybrid. It means I'll get weight in the leader to get that fly down faster and to hold it under if I do a more aggressive retrieve. Now, we fished around the corner here into this bay. We came out of the weather a touch. We're still fishing with our floating line and our sink three tip. Now, I might not have mentioned before, what that sink three means is that it sinks at three inches per second. So it's a nice medium level sinking and I've still got that medium tungsten bead on. I've gotten a couple of bumps as we came around the corner there, but so far I'm thinking I might need to get deeper again. So I'm gonna give this another couple casts, slow it right down, see if I can't get down to a fish, but then I'll most likely swap over to my favorite and I'd say the most versatile sinking line you can use. Okay. I've just switched over to my favorite sinking line, I'd say of all time. It's probably the best all rounder. Now, I don't know if you can see that because this is the Scientific Angler's Stillwater Camo Intermediate. So before we had our sink three tip on our floating line, that means three inches of sink per second that the line is in the water. With this one, an intermediate, they sink at about one and a half inches per second. Now that's a bit slower than that sink three tip, but this whole line is intermediate. So the whole line sinks at that rate. So it keeps the flies down in the water column, whether I'm fishing slowly or quickly, it keeps them down and exactly where I want them, depending on how long I let it sink for and how fast I retrieve the line. It's probably the most versatile sinking line you can have. If you were only gonna have two lines to fish on a lake, you'd want a floating line with a few tips and this intermediate line or another one like it. That will get you out of trouble in most situations from the bank and from the boat. I'm gonna go through and show you how to make a leader for this one too. Now, this leader is gonna be quite simple. The only difference is, is I'm gonna run two flies with my intermediate line because I can have a heavier fly, a lighter fly, which means I'm gonna fish two slightly different parts of the water column. It also means I can chop and change between flies and see if there's a pattern that the fish are really desperate for. But I'm gonna start off with just some 15 pound mono. Now, the reason I've switched off fluoro and gone to mono is that I want some thicker line to help turn over these flies. And then I'm gonna attach it just with a loop to loop to my camo line here. I've got about six foot of that 15 pound. That'll do nicely. Now from that 15 pound, I'm gonna jump straight to eight pound. And I want six, seven, eight, nine-ish foot. Now the reason I'm going longer on this little eight pound section 
difference because like I said, I wanna put two flies on this rig and I wanna spread them out enough where they're not gonna tangle with each other and they're gonna sit in slightly different parts of the water column. So I'm gonna come back to our, my loop back here. I'm gonna measure six foot and just a touch more. And then I'm gonna cut that eight pound in half again and retie it, adding a dropper. Now, on that dropper, I'm gonna put the lighter of my two flies. I'm gonna to stick to that nice medium weight tungsten with the bright orange. So that's gonna ride a little bit higher in the water column. It might get down two or three foot. Whereas my point fly, I'm going to make a heavier tungsten fly again. Very similar style fly, just a much heavier tungsten bead. And I'm gonna get that down, I'd say five or six foot. Before we were fishing a foot, maybe three foot deep. Now we're moving into three to six foot deep. Let's go give it a crack. Now, what makes this full intermediate line so effective on a lake like this, is if I do a nice long cast and then work it quickly, I can fish up in the water column, but because that intermediate line hangs under the water, I don't pull my flies up to the surface. They stay just below the surface and fishing through shallow water, they can be really effective for aggressive fish. Then, if I do a nice long cast, strip, but then pause, I can let the flies drop a little bit. I can let them get down a few feet, then I can wake them up and let them drop again. And I can get a really nice start and stop action that starts to drop down a little bit deeper, hopefully starting to get into those fish's strike zone. Now, finally, with this full intermediate line, I can whack it right out there from the boat or from the bank, give it a nice firm strip to make sure everything's tight, and then I can count down one, two, three. As I'm doing this, I'm figuring out at what depth the fish might be sitting. Nine, 10, all right. I've gotten 10 seconds down. I'm not good enough to do the math on how many inches I'm down now, but I'm pretty certain I'm about, you know, five to six foot. And then I can do a nice start and stop retrieve. Those flies are staying down in that strike zone. I'm not pulling them up until I get right to the end of the boat. That's what makes this intermediate so effective. I can fish it fast and shallow. I can fish it at all different depths, counting them down. And if I see a fish cruising along, I can pick it up relatively easily and bang it straight back out and cast at them. Let's see if we can't get one. Oh, there's a fish, you followed right up. <laughs> You've always got to hang. Yep, yep, there he is. <laughs> There we go. Just getting down that extra little bit really ended up helping us here. Oh, there we go. Beautiful brownie. Fly's just fallen out. And you can see how effective those sinking lines can be, especially for beautiful fish like that. I mean, that's just a perfect brown. Yep, yep. <laughs> Come here, matey. Beautiful. Another stunning jack. Absolutely smoked that fly again. Because that's the advantage too with that full intermediate and also with the fast sinking line that we're about to use is that we can do a nice quick retrieve and get an aggressive eat from these fish without pulling our flies out of the strike zone. Because every time you strip your fly, yes, you're moving it, but you're generally moving it up as well in the water column. I'll send him home. See you, matey. Now that just goes to show the versatility of that intermediate line. The floater got us a few good follows, but then we had a couple eats on the intermediate, as well as that nice hook up on that brownie. Now, we're gonna bust out the big guns next. All right, time for the cannon. This is one of my favorite, fastest sinking lines of all time. Now we've had a sink three on the floating line in a tip, so that was three inches per second. The intermediate sinks at an inch and a half per second. This bad boy sinks at five inches per second, so it's a sink five. Now, it's a sink five at the front end of the line. Then, about 30 feet back, it turns into a sink three. Then, another 30 feet back again, it turns into an intermediate. The reasoning behind that is that that front end, that sink five, sinks nice and fast, 
the sync three sinks a little slower and then the intermediate sinks slower again, which means you get a nice straight line to your flies at all times. It helps improve that contact a lot. And when you strip, you get a really nice action where it lifts but then drops again. So it adds action, keeps you in contact. And I've caught so many different fish with this setup in deeper water, even in shallower water again, but fishing very aggressively in estuaries, lakes, even rivers. This, if you're gonna have the final line in your arsenal, would be my recommendation. Scientific Anglers Titan Triple Density Sink 5. Now it's matched to this seven weight rod. It comes in all different weights and sizes. If you only had one rod to fish all of these lines, you'd get a six weight, get six weight lines in all of them. You can trade your reels out on the rod as you fish throughout the day and you need different depths as you go. Now, let's give the old cannon a go. Big Blue wants to catch some fish. Now. With this big, heavy sinking line, I can do my countdown again, but I'm gonna get much, much deeper. In fact, I might end up hitting the bottom, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If I feel the bottom as I'm counting down, oh, there he is, that's a good one. <laughs> sinking lines work. I mean, that's the video. Sinking lines, good. Lots of fish. <laughs> now, funnily enough, we fished over this spot a couple of times. First with our floating line, and then again with our intermediate line twice. And then as soon as I put on my fast sinking line and let it get a bit deeper again, instead of coming up with a brown, I found a rainbow. Now that's not uncommon. These rainbows are sitting a bit deeper today and getting that fast sinking line down to them has ended up in a beautiful Yukonbean rainbow. Couldn't have planned it better if I tried. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I was rudely interrupted by that fish, I was talking about the fact that with this big, heavy sink five line, I can count down and get much deeper and even fine bottom. So I'm counting down in my head, I'm up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just gonna do a slow retrieve, 11, 12, Whoop, just felt like it brushed a little stick. Okay, cool. So 12 is about the bottom. Now I could go through and 12 times five inches per second plus the tungsten weight of my flies, etc., etc., and figure out exactly how deep I am there. But if I know I've just got to count to 12 and that's the bottom, then I'm pretty well made in the shade. Or if I find that the fish are hanging just off the bottom, I can count to 10 and then start my retrieve and I'm gonna keep my flies down exactly in the zone. Four, five, let's go to six. Let's see halfway through the water column and a bit of a faster retrieve. This is when with sinking lines, you can start mucking around with your depths, with your retrieves. Oh, that was a good grab. So that was six seconds down and a fast retrieve. So now I can repeat that and stay in the zone. And I can sit here and do that all day. Eventually I'll pull another fish from this school. But I like covering water, so I'm gonna get back on a little drift and cruise along and see if we can't find another fish to finish up the day on our big sinking line. Now counting down a fast sinking line like that is an awesome way to get fish. So is stripping as fast as you possibly can. I love aggressive stream of fishing. It's one of my favorite things to do. And with a fast sinking line, no matter how fast I strip, my flies are gonna stay a couple of feet under the surface, right in that strike zone. And I can really get some aggressive eats from fish. I can force them to come up and smack it, which I like doing. Might not be the best way to fish today, but it's fun. And if you're not having fun, there's not really any point. <laughs> yep, yep, ooh, it's got a bit of weight to it. There we go. Another beautiful brownie. I mean, sinking lines, get some, throw them around, fish through the water column. Oh, good one. <laughs> and hopefully you can get into a couple of nice lake trout. This, see, that's actually quite a good fish. All right, I was trying to do a whole cool outro there, but this is a big one. Yeah. There we go, <laughs> another cracker. Beautiful big jack on that fast sink line, getting down that little bit deeper just helped. Probably about three or four pounds, just an ideal fish. 
great fight. <laughs> Sinking lines all the way. See you, mate. So as the weather gets really fishy now and really terrible for filming, we've discovered today how to use sinking lines. Three lines are a really good option from a floater with a sink tip through to an intermediate and then a fast sink line. Hopefully this helps you get out there, make an informed choice and get a few more fish. Whew, let's get back to the car. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs>